in this postman session we are going to see how we can run the collections in the more conventional way which is using the postman collection runner now in the last session i showed you how you can run your collection using the new postman cli which is also one of the options which is available inside the collection runner although you cannot run the cli from inside the collection runner it does provide you with all the details which is required which we manually created while using the cli so let's see how we can do this using the collection runner right so we are going to uh, use the same collection which is github uh, it has got a folder which is repository flow and it basically creates updates uh, and deletes the repository right so the whole flow of uh, a repository inside github now in order to run this collection um, i can select the collection right and from here from the menu i can select run collection i can also go to the right side and there i will find a run option right so when you click on this run option uh, it shows you the collection runner right uh, it shows you which requests um, are inside the collection all will be selected by default you can run any specific request which you want inside the collection by selecting or deselecting there are uh, there is also an option to deselect all and select all and then um, you can also choose how you want to run your collection right so the first option is to run manually so you can run this collection inside the collection runner right from here uh, then there is schedule runs right so you can periodically run collection at a specified time on the postman cloud and you can monitor your runs um, at those specified times uh, we'll look at this in some of the later session and then there is the option automate runs via cli right so when you select this option uh, you will notice that it automatically creates the commands which is required to run in your local terminal the same thing which we did earlier but here uh, it automatically does that right it gives you all the information rather than you figuring out what you need inside the cli uh, it will provide you with everything the only thing which you need to do is you need to add your api key the same way uh, we did it earlier right you grab the api keys from your account and then add it here so the first step is to log in into postman with the api key then run the postman collection using the id and it also uses uh, the environment variable id right so the environment id is also present because it recognizes that this particular collection uses environment variables so everything is here you just need to copy and then just replace your api key here okay and then you will be able to run this on the postman cli there is another option also uh, which is not configured yet uh, we'll look at this later but you can also run it on a ci cd tool uh, using a pipeline something in jenkins right so you just need to configure and then uh, you can run this collection in a ci cd tool as well but for now uh, we'll be focusing on running this manually right so when you select run manually you will get all these options uh, for configuration uh, you can have multiple iterations or a single iteration you can delay um, basically uh, give some delay time between each request right uh, in milliseconds and then you can also pass a data file so that it can iterate uh, through different rows inside the data file right uh, there is also advanced settings uh, you can save the response of each request uh, while it is running um, it won't log the responses unless you select this um, if you select the log response then uh, it might impact performance if you have got a very large collection otherwise it's fine uh, we'll look at both of these options uh, key variable values so this will uh, write the value of the variable at the end of the run uh, to its current value in the session so you can compare um, what was the actual value which was there for that particular variable um, you can run collection without using stored cookies so you can either use it or don't use it right and you can also save cookies after your collection run so it will update the cookies stored in the session and save them to your cookie manager right 
so all of these advanced settings are present uh, right now I'm not selecting any of them I'm going with the default and we'll see uh, how the output looks like but the other thing to notice is the run order right so by default the collection will be run in the same order as it is there in the inside the collection but you can always change the order okay so I can drag and drop uh, to change the order of this request also uh, what I have done in this particular request is I'm using the set next request so um, I am also making sure that my next request is uh, this particular request get created repository right this is what I want to run after this particular request and that I'm doing through the script so no matter in what order my requests are present inside my collection it will go in a, a flow uh, which is set uh, inside the script right so I don't need to worry about uh, the place of my request uh, or the order of my request inside my collection but still if you're not done it in the script then you can make it sure while before running the collection okay uh, create it as per the order of your uh, requests so so that you don't get unnecessary errors or um, any problems right another thing to note is uh, if your collection is using uh, environment variables then you need to make sure that uh, on the right hand side you have selected the particular environment otherwise again you will see failures right so if no environment is selected and I run this it is going to fail okay so make sure you are selecting the right environment before you run the collection okay so let's go ahead and run this collection with the default options for now and you will see all the requests will start running on this particular window uh, which is the run results window and you will see it is giving you some information as well the source uh, the environment iterations the duration it took um, all the tests uh, which are written for those requests and the average response time right um, you have different tabs like past failed and skipped so I don't have any failed and skipped uh, you can also click on view summary to have this uh, report kind of thing right so it will provide you with the run summary how many tests were there how many passed how many failed or you can switch between the results and the summary okay so this is the detailed results uh, window and you can have uh, also click on the summary window now the other good thing about it is uh, it will if you click on this particular uh, request link you will get all the details here right so what was the request URL what was the request headers which you have passed what was the request body uh, the response headers uh, which are not logged because we did not select it and the response body as well so these two options right now are empty and that is because um, we don't want to affect the performance of the collection run uh, through this response so unless you don't need it or uh, don't select it but if you want to see uh, what was the response body what was the response headers then we can enable that in the advanced settings right now uh, if you go to uh, the top uh, we can do a new run which will again run this uh, manually inside the collection runner you can always automate the run you can schedule run you can run it using CLI and integrate with CI CD right the same options which we saw earlier but we want to run this right again but with different options if I would have run this with same options I could have selected run again right but uh, I want to create a new run for this collection um, option would be same run manually uh, maybe I will increase the number of iterations this time and then um, I will in the advanced settings I will select save responses okay um, so let's go ahead and run this uh, again this collection and this time around you will see that um, it has got two iterations right so it will complete that and once it is done um, you will see when you click on the request that you have got response headers okay and you have also got the response body the whole body okay so that's quite useful uh, you can filter based on your uh, choice right what you want if you want the response body or you don't want the response body for each particular request 
So uh, that's how you run uh, your uh, collection manually inside the collection runner. Um, the last thing which you can do is you can also export the results. Okay, so on the right hand side, you will see there is an option export results. So if you want to share this results with someone, um, you can export it. Okay, uh, it will be exported in the form of a JSON file. Okay, and uh, it will save that test run to your disk. And uh, if you want to see it, how it looks like, then you can open it. Uh, it's a JSON file, so you will need a particular tool um, to open it. So I'm using uh, the Visual Studio code uh, to view this uh, JSON file, and you can see uh, it will display you all the details in the form of a JSON file, right? So if you want to uh, save this, export it, and save it to your disk, you can then share it with any of your team members if you want and also if you want to see more logs uh, apart from what is provided uh, for the request you can all always go back to the console window which will be logging everything right so whatever you are running it will be uh, logging all the requests and responses so you can always go back to your console um, log window and there you can find all the details of your run okay so this is how uh, you can run your collection manually inside the collection runner um, with different options. Um, you can always run it with CLI as shown earlier. Uh, we'll also see how you can use the data file inside the collection runner and we'll see how you can automate your collection run uh, in the Postman cloud and also integrate it with CI CD in the coming up sessions.